Hey guys, Phil from Trail Talk MTB here, and today we're talking about my experience with the MRP Ribbon Air and Coil after one year of testing. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. We do mountain bike reviews as well as vlogs in Australia. So from now on, I'll also be doing timestamps for each section of the review. So if you go into the description, I'll have timestamps for each section of what I'm talking about. So after seeing the Ribbon Air win Pink Bike Suspension Product of the Year in 2017, I was a bit intrigued. I thought one, it would be an awesome fork and two, it would provide a good long-term test fork. For six months, I can test the air and then I can convert it over the coil to the coil for the next six months. And while it was good to test the two forks out over the past year, I definitely really struggled with the air and the coil, although it felt great, there were still some issues that I know with the air that carried over. So without getting too much into depth here, let's look a little bit at the design of the fork. So let's start with what both forks share and that's the chassis as well as the damper. So the stanchions are 35 millimeters wide and the ribbon air weighs in at 1.9 kilos and the coil weighs in at 2.1 kilos. So the stiffness of the chassis I found comparable to say a RockShox Pike, so it's best suited to kind of trail and all mountain riding. So a cool feature of the fork is that the arch on the lowers is hollowed out on the front side instead of the rear. So if you live in the UK and there's plenty of mud, it's not going to be getting caught up in the back there. Another cool design is that the threaded side of the axle on the lowers, it actually rotates. You can kind of spin it around freely and that makes it really easy to place the axle where you want it. So if you've got a quick release, it's not going to be pointing forward or anything. It's really easy to have it just pointed up. And then if you do prefer just a normal bolt through axle, there's that too. And there are also some bleed valves on the back of both sides of the lowers. So if there's any kind of built up pressure in there, you can release that too. So now onto the damper, it's a twin tube design and it's got a spring back IFP, so internal floating piston. There is only low speed compression and you get eight clicks of low speed compression that's adjusted on the top of the fork. And then you've got 18 clicks of adjustment on rebound on the bottom of the fork. So now onto some specifics. So starting with the ramp control. So on the Ribbon Air, you have the ramp control cartridge that you're used to seeing on a lot of other forks. So you can buy it uh, aftermarket from MRP and install it on say your 36s, your parks and all that kind of stuff like that. So in short, it replaces the needs for volume spaces, which are position sensitive, while the ramp control cartridge actually addresses progressivity in a speed sensitive manner. The great thing about the ramp control cartridge is that you can adjust the progressivity on the fly. So if you want to add a bit more progression, you can adjust that on the top of the fork. So the coil version actually retains some form of ramp control. However, it moves from the top of the fork onto the bottom. I won't go too much into the specifics here on how it works, but it still behaves in a speed sensitive manner like the normal ramp control cartridge. The air spring's pretty trick too in the way that you can adjust the positive and negative air springs independently. So you pump up the positive air spring on the top of the fork and then the negative on the bottom of the fork. And then looking at the spring side of the coil, there's plenty of options there. So you can go from extra soft all the way up to extra stiff. So there's plenty of options for most riders out there. The last thing is it's pretty easy to adjust the travel on the forks. It's not like rock shocks where you need to buy other parts like a new air spring or something like that. Once you open it up, you can adjust it there. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the performance of the Ribbon Air. So I'm going to be straight up and honest here. I didn't really get along with this fork. I really struggled to get a setting that worked for me. It just didn't gel well with my riding. However, I definitely feel there's a very specific audience that this fork's going to work well for, but I'll get into that in a second. So let's start with a bit about the setup of the fork. So as I said, I really struggled to get a setup that worked for me. I tried everything. I tried following the recommended guide. I tried jumping up the positive a bit more to get a bit more support. I tried running the higher positive to get that support as well as a bit more in the negative to make it a bit plusher off the top. Tried everything, a bit more ramp control, a bit more rebound, a bit of compression here and there. Tried everything, I just couldn't get it to work for me. So regardless of setup, there was a few things that I noted. The first half of the stroke, it was definitely a bit divey. There wasn't a lot of support there. And then say if you wanted a bit more support by adding a bit of compression and a bit of pressure, then it would just feel a bit harsh as you kind of get through that blow through in the start of the stroke and where it dived and it just feel harsh after that. So it was really hard to get a setting that worked. So the best setting that worked for me was adding around about 10 PSI extra in the positive spring than what was recommended, then adding another 10 PSI on top of that in the negative. Adding a bit more in the positive gave a little bit more support and having a little bit more in the negative kind of gave a little bit more small compliance than if I was just running the even pressure, say in the positive and the negative. In terms of the ramp up, I was running pretty much none at all. I really didn't get along with the speed sensitive nature of it. So if I could run as little as possible, that was definitely the best. So anywhere from one to five clicks, that kind of worked for me. So even with all this, I still struggled to get the fork to stop from diving. So I added a few clicks of compression, so maybe two or three clicks, and that propped up a little bit more in its travel, but it still had that feeling where it would blow through the first half or two thirds of its travel, and then it would feel a bit harsh after that. So this was as good as I could get it. I tried everything, as I said, 
this is kind of as good as it gets for me. However, I will give the fork some credit. It worked well in some situations. So when you're doing very slow rock gardens where it's very jarring, so if you live in an area where it's very slow and technical, because it uses up a lot of its travel, it's gonna feel a little less jarring plush in a sense, but yeah, it's just gonna soak up those really slow hits really well. And I definitely wouldn't say it's on the plush side, it just felt divey to me. Like a Lyric or a 36, they still feel plush when you've got higher pressures, so a bit more support. And yeah, the ribbon just felt diving in those situations, whereas those forks, they can still feel plush as well as supportive. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the speed sensitive nature of the progressivity of the fork. So because it is speed sensitive, I felt like it was unpredictable at times. So if you do have predictable terrain, so say a lot of jumps, a lot of drops where it is very predictable, it worked well in this situation. So it definitely ramped up well when the hits were predictable. But if you had like a rock garden or something like that, where it was a bit more unpredictable, there would be times where it did ramp up when you wanted it to, to. And then when the times it would just feel like it dived. So it was unpredictable in the situations and I didn't really get along with that. That's why I ran as little ramp up as possible. And because there wasn't as much support there, when you went down rock gardens with a lot of repeated hits, it kind of packed down and when you regardless of rebound setting so usually if that happens you add a bit more rebound even when you added a bit more rebound it definitely feel like it would pack down and it would feel really harsh in those situations okay so let's talk a little bit about the compression now so the first thing that you will notice is because it uses that twin tube design it's a little bit more squelchy than other forks so you definitely notice when you compress the fork there is a bit of a squelchy sound was an issue for me but that is something to note so don't get worried if it does happen so it's tough to come up with a word that really described the way that the compression circuit worked but it just feels unrefined so when you, it did add more compression, it still kind of gave you a little bit more support, but that first half, two thirds of the stroke, it just didn't give you that support that you needed. And if you did, then it would just start to feel dead. Um, there's no really other way that I can explain it other than that, so I'm sorry, but yeah, I just didn't really gel with the compression side of things either. So adding say two or three clicks of compression did prop things up a little bit, but it still felt like it dived a bit through the first half of its travel. And then if you did add more compression, it would feel even harsher when you got into the lower two thirds of the travel. So yeah, as I said, just didn't really get along with the compression side of things either. So other things to note, it has a bit less pop than other forks in the market. I really struggled to kind of get a setting that gave me a bit more pop. So if you do prefer that, then there's probably better options on the market. It's also not the stiffest fork out there either. So if you do a bit more enduro riding and you want something that's a bit stiff, I definitely recommend the Lyric or the 36 would be a better option for you. However, to be fair, the Ribbon Air is a lighter fork, so it's more, say, equivalent to the Pike. But yeah, if you do more trail and all mountain riding, then the Ribbon would probably be okay for you. It just fell in those faster sections with a lot of rocks. It definitely felt like it was getting deflected a little bit, say, compared to the stiffer forks in the market. So this is probably sounding a little bit like a hit piece now, but I just didn't really gel with the fork and if there's two things I want from the fork I want it to be supportive and I want it to be predictable and I just wasn't getting that from the fork. So the three main takeaways I got from using the Ribbon Air for six months it was unsupportive, unpredictable and it was uncomfortable in really harsh situations so when it did pack down when you did blow through that first half of travel and you had a few repeat of hits it just felt a bit harsh. So now onto the conversion to the coil. This was a bit of a saving grace for this fork. I really enjoyed riding the coil. However, there were a few main issues that carried over from the air to the coil, and the main being the stiffness of the fork, as well as the damper as well. However, my main complaint with the fork was to do with the spring. So now that that air spring was gone and the coil was in, it definitely improved a lot of the issues that I was seeing. So when it comes to the setup, I definitely recommend going one spring higher than what MRP recommends. Around about 83, 82 kilos, I was in the middle of say a medium spring. I went up to the firm and I definitely felt like it was a lot better. In regards to other settings, I ran no ramp up at all. As I said, I didn't get along with the speed sensitive nature of the ramp up on these forks. And then on the damp side of things, I ran no compression either because Adding a bit of a compression, as I said, didn't like the feeling, it just made the fork feel a bit dead in general. So running the coil gave me the support that I needed, it had great small bump compliance, I really liked the linear nature of the spring as well, so that felt great too. The main thing I noticed, it sat a lot higher in travel, so even though it sat a lot higher in the travel, it had this great small bump, but you just didn't dive down, there was great support there, and you just sat a lot higher than you did on the ribbon air. And using the firm spring, I rarely bottomed out the fork, it was only on really ludicrously big G outs or drops where I really slammed the front end that I bottomed out the fork. So in all situations, I got along really well with the spring, except when it got really rowdy, the spring behaved really well. However, if there was a little bit more stiffness in the chassis, that would have been great. So in regards to other things that I know with the fork, it does take a while to break in. So for me, it took around about five to six really solid rides. I know people have said that it takes two rides for really to break in, but five to six rides for it to really break in and really get that suppleness off the top. And another slight annoyance, if you do want to change the spring, then you have to take the lowers off. With a lot of other coil forks out there, you just undo the top cap and just put a new spring in. Uh, so it is a little bit annoying that you have to do this on the ribbon coil. 
So would I recommend this fork? Honestly, I can't say that I could. In the air configuration, given the weight of the fork, I feel like a pike would be a better option. I prefer the air spring in the pike, just feels like it's got a lot more support and it's a bit more supple. And then on the damper side of things, it's just a bit better too. The Charger Damp is a really great product. Well, what about the coil? As I said, I really enjoyed my time in the coil. It was supple as well as really supportive. However, here's the thing. The coil weighs 2.1 kilos. So if you're going in the coil, you're probably a more aggressive rider anyway. And given the weight, as well as the chassis stiffness, I can't help but feeling a 36 or a Lyric would be a better option given that they are lighter. And to be honest, they feel just as good. The air springs on these forks, they're really good now with the bigger negative air springs. They're just a bit more supple, a bit more supportive than what they used to be. And then on the damper side, the Grip 2 and the Charger 2 are just superior dampers. There's no real way around it, so I definitely feel like those forks would be a better option. And if you do prefer the coil side of things, then you can put a smash pot or the push kit in either of those forks and you get a coil too. So I definitely feel like those two forks, so the Lyric and the 36, are definitely a better package than what the ribbon coil offers. So here are my final thoughts. I definitely prefer the coil over the air. If you get in this fork, then I definitely take the coil over there any day of the week. However, there are still some flaws universal to both products that I noted. Compared to what's on the market, I feel like both forks just come up a little bit short. The air spring lacks support compared to the other forks on the market and the speed sensitive progressivity, I just didn't get along with it. And to me, it was a bit uncomfortable and unpredictable. And even when I tried compensating by adding a bit more pressure in the positive, adding a bit of compression, jacking up the negative to keep it a bit more supple, I just couldn't get a setting that worked for me. Even when I tried to compensate by adding a little bit more pressure to get a bit more support or a little bit more compression, the same result was there. It was a divey first half to two thirds of a travel and then a really harsh second half of the travel. The good thing is the coil solved a lot of these issues, gave me the support that I needed, it was supple, it was everything that I was looking for. However, given the weight, the stiffness of the fork, I can't help but feeling there's better options out there. And if you have any questions in regards to anything that I noted or anything, feel the safety own the fork or you felt something completely different, I'm more than happy to answer any questions about the forks in the comments. So I know this isn't a very positive review, but I like to be transparent with you guys. And if a product's not good, I'm going to tell you about it. But if it's great, I'm going to shout it from the rooftops as well. So in doing so, not a lot of companies like to send me their products because I am a harsh reviewer and I'm going to tell them how I feel. So if you do want to see some more independent reviews, I've got a Patreon as well. So if you want to sign up to that, I'll put the link in the description below. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also like the video too. And if you have any questions or anything like that, don't forget to leave a comment too. And as always, thanks for watching guys.